The previous video talked about how rare minus frequent difference waves can be used to assess the timing of categorization. In this video, I'll take the same logic and apply it to the timing of attention with the N2PC component and the timing of response selection with the lateralized readiness potential. In N2PC experiments, we divide up the data according to whether the target is on the left or the right side of the display, and we see a more negative voltage over the hemisphere contralateral to the target. Logically, the voltage can't be more negative over the contralateral hemisphere than over the ipsilateral hemisphere until the brain has determined whether the target is on the left or the right side of the display. So, if you look at a contra minus ipsy difference wave, you can know that the brain has localized the target by the time the difference wave deviates from zero. And if the onset time of the difference wave is later in one condition than in another, or in one group than another, you can conclude that this reflects a difference in the time required to find the target and shift attention to it. For example, in the first experiment where we used the stimuli shown here, we didn't do a good job of equating the salience of the red and the green. The red item immediately popped out from the display, but the green item was a little harder to detect. So the response times were about 50 milliseconds slower in the attend green condition than the attend red condition. Remember, subjects were instructed to attend to red in some trial blocks and green in others, and they pressed one of two buttons to indicate the location of the gap in the item of the attended color. Here are the contra minus ipsy difference waves. You can see that the N2PC is delayed about 50 milliseconds in the attend green condition. The difference wave onsets at around 180 milliseconds for attend red and around 230 milliseconds for attend green. These are actually the data from a group of control subjects in a schizophrenia study. Our main goal was to see if the N2PC is delayed in people with schizophrenia. This plot overlays the data from the schizophrenia and control groups average across attend red and attend green. You can see that the onset time of the N2PC is essentially identical in the two groups. We concluded that schizophrenia does not slow down the process of finding the target and shifting attention to it. Okay, that's enough about the N2PC for now. There's an analogous component in the motor domain called the lateralized readiness potential, or LRP. You get it in tasks where you need to make either a left hand or right hand response depending on what stimulus you see. For example, subjects might be instructed to make a left-hand response for odd numbers and a right-hand response for even numbers. Just like the visual system, the motor system is contralaterally organized, with the left hemisphere controlling the right hand and the right hemisphere controlling the left hand. And just like the N2PC, the lateralized readiness potential is a negativity over the contralateral hemisphere, except that it's contralateral to the hand that's about to respond rather than being contralateral to the location of the visual target and it's biggest over motor cortex instead of visual cortex. So, when you prepare to make a left-hand response, you get a negative going voltage over the right hemisphere motor cortex, and you get the same negative going voltage over the left hemisphere when you prepare to make a right-hand response. We can collapse the data into a contralateral waveform and an ipsilateral waveform, and then make a contra minus ipsy difference wave that subtracts away all the non-lateralized activity and isolates the LRP. The LRP appears when you prepare a response, whether or not you actually execute that response. And the logic of the difference wave means that, once the voltage of the difference wave deviates from zero, the brain must have begun to figure out which hand to prepare. How could the voltage be more negative over the contralateral hemisphere if the brain hadn't yet begun to decide which hand to prepare? The onset latency of the LRP is therefore a great index of the amount of time required to determine which motor response is appropriate for a given stimulus. One of my favorite LRP studies is this one from Stan DeHane's lab. They found that even subliminal stimuli can elicit an LRP, even though the subject is unaware of the stimulus and doesn't make an overt behavioral response. This shows that information about subliminal stimuli reaches the motor control system. That tells us something important about subliminal perception that wasn't visible in behavior. The paper also included an fMRI experiment, but it wasn't nearly as cool as the LRP experiment. 